out of the blue. Enjoy to the fullest the resources that are within thy reach. Pindar For years I have talked with Jerry and Gary, my endearing sister and brother-in-law, about the creative process of our mind and how it reproduces our mental habits. We spoke about wishing for something, but holding the attitude of its absence and lack, thus giving crossed signals to the creative process in our subconscious mind, and how wishing is itself a negative, as our habitual thoughts and attitudes are highly creative and perpetuate themselves in our experience. We discuss the fact that whatever is predominant in our thoughts is the direction of our lives and that wittingly or unwittingly we are each thought by thought shaping and moulding the quality of our own destiny. We observed the lives of various people and saw their attitudes corresponded with their experience, whether happy or disenchanted, well or ill, financially affluent or depressed. We noted the cause equals effect. We remarked that young children should be taught in school the tremendous importance of the creative process of their minds and how to create and sustain a healthy and productive mental attitude. During one of these conversations in which we shared our most recent successes of the creative laws of our mind, Gary remarked that he had never engaged in a discipline of imaginal experience to demonstrate increased finances. He suggested to my sister Jerry that they choose a figure and invest some daily creative time towards this goal. She liked the idea and they settled on a figure of $150,000. They had fulfilled other goals. Why should the creative process not work for money as well? Knowing that this meant engaging in a discipline of well-stipulated creative time in which they must rehearse the consequences of their desire as already realized and endow it with life by feeling. They resolved to make it a very serious project, carefully following all the rules, the most important of which was sustaining a sense of joy and celebration about the results of their fulfillment. They set out in their inward journey. The story follows as the two related it to me in happy animation. We felt that our energies were highest in the morning, so we decided to do our creative rehearsals the first thing after waking and sitting rather than lying in order to remain awake and alert. So we began and found it to be both easy and pleasant to imagine that we were experiencing really fun things and places that we both enjoy. We got off to a good start and agreed that we would give the project our very best and faithful attention. Assuming that this additional $150,000 was already added to our investments, we chose to increase our travels to new and exciting horizons. Having enjoyed several cruises, we selected another direction and imagined that we were on a long voyage. While sitting in the big lounge chairs at home in our den, we each surrounded ourselves with the impression of an imaginary ship, entirely forgetting where we actually sat. We experienced in sensory detail a variety of pleasant activities. We felt ourselves in our attractive stateroom and engaged in conversations about the pleasures of the trip. When we went to bed at night in our own apartment, we imagined that we were aboard ship, that we felt the slight motion of the waves, and we thought of home as being in the opposite direction of our travel. We looked for inspiration from books, music and selected television programs wherever possible as we found that our rehearsal of our dream come true felt more real and was more pleasurable when we began on a happy note. Realising the benefit of directing our highest energies of the day 
into our creative practice, we spoke to no one about our project. We find that all our plans work out best when we talk about them only after they happen. After one month of daily practice, we felt that our goal had been fully conceived and that it was now forming and developing in our subconscious. We spoke very little about it to one another, just a few words to communicate our bright spirit and our teamwork. At the end of the second month, we noticed a broader perspective in our attitude about our financial security. It seemed that we had grown and expanded mentally, but there were no signs of any change. We invested our time in a third month, and at the end of this time, there were signs, but not the ones we counted on. Both of us had begun to weary a bit, and doubts crept in as to whether or not our dream investment would ever pay any dividends. Yet, neither of us wanted to admit this to the other, nor even to ourselves. Feeling somewhat discouraged, we continued our daily practice and I found myself rehearsing new scenes to enliven the routine. Neither of us had made any decision as to how long we would continue our rehearsals, but we knew that we were not ready to give up. Now, we had reached the end of our fourth month of creative imagining, with the only sign of change being that of our drooping spirits. Still, we withheld discussing it, as each of us felt it would discourage the other one. We both wondered if the magnitude of one's desire might influence the time required for it to develop in the creative subconscious and move from the subjective to the objective domain. Did money not represent its equivalent in energy? Perhaps we had not fulfilled the requirement for the money we had accepted as being already ours. We wondered how a higher or lower figure might have affected our practice. Would $1,000 have been easier to demonstrate than $1 million, for example? As we each wrestled silently with such questions, we realized that we had made a four-month investment of daily practice time and were faced with the beginning of a fifth month. What should we do? Should we stop the rehearsals and assume that our subconscious was sufficiently imprinted and would objectify our plan in due time? Or should we continue until either it appeared or it became clear that something was missing in our practice? At this point, the phone rang, and an unfamiliar voice asked to speak to Gary. From the tone, it was clearly long distance. Watching Gary with curiosity about the identity of the caller, I noticed that suddenly his face became flushed and his eyes widened in surprise. From his answers, it was evident that he was being asked to identify himself very thoroughly. Was it possible could it be? Did I dare to hope that this was the great moment of truth? Gary hung up the phone and shouted excitedly, That's it! That's our $150,000 right out of the blue! We both hugged, laughed and danced around the room, exclaiming, It worked! It actually happened! And we'll have the money within a few weeks, said Gary. Well, it came, as you know, and the cheque was even more than we expected. After taxes, we received $167,000. But what was its source, I asked? The lottery, a tax refund, the winning of a contest or the horse races? Nothing of the kind, they answered excitedly. It was from the last source you could possibly imagine. Do you mean, I queried, that it was something that you could never have expected? Never in a million years, they assured me. All this occurred only recently, and you can well imagine that their $150,000 is now well invested, and they are reserved on another exciting cruise to exotic places. Inspired by their successful efforts, 
They are now working on a new project and plan to continue one after another. Man is truly in his element when he is in the process of creation. When he ceases to be creative, he declines. It could be said that life and living is a continual creative process. Gary, speaking words of wisdom, announced, if only people knew that they can fulfill their own dreams by living in them in the present. The subconscious is the womb of creation. Whatever the mind of man can conceive and feel as true, the subconscious can and must objectify. Neville Goddard End of this chapter Thank you.